So joining me now here inside of Mission Control, uh, the Orion Program Manager, Mark Geyer. Now, Mark, you were working on something else 15 years ago. You were pretty heavily involved in the, the first launch of Zarya, again, 15-year anniversary today. Uh, what, Real quick, what was your role back then? What were you doing? So with, there were a lot of Russian elements. There was the FGB service module progress in Soyuz, and so I was the manager of uh, all those elements and the integration into space station. So it was, I think it was called the Russian Elements Integration Team at the time. So you had a lot of spacecraft to kind of look after and manage and try not to lose track of. Huh? Yeah, and we had good good element leads for each one. So Doug Drury was actually the FGB manager at the time, mm -hmm. so I was uh, over him in that area. Okay, yeah. and you know, normally I'd start off asking if you remember how you felt back then, you know, the days leading up to launch, but we actually have a clip of yeah. you from 1998. <laughs> Why don't we take a quick look? So to see a vehicle actually being moved to the pad and you know you're only a couple days away is thrilling and I've never been a part of a um, unmanned launch before so that's it's very exciting. Um, so that's really cool. The other part of it is that with Station there are so many launches before your project is complete. Um, so there's still a lot of work ahead and so we're I'm extremely excited to get started. And I, I'm ready to continue the next step, but, but no, we've got a lot of hard work ahead of us and uh, that we need to keep focused. So it's kind of a mixed, but it's great to get going, to get started. That'll be great. So Mark, where, where were you when that video was taken? Uh, let's see. I was, uh, there was a hotel um, that uh, Krunichev owns in Baikonur, mm -hmm. and it was, uh, we were there for a week, and it was really... For the preps, there was a there was a final review a couple of days before launch where they needed NASA and Boeing to say everything was good, mm -hmm. and if there were any other issues with um, problems, then we were there to deal with it. So we were there for a whole week. Um, Doug and I and uh, Jack Bacon and some other folks were there, and, and of course the Boeing folks, um, mm -hmm. Ginger and and and, and uh, Scott Wood or. Uh, um, they, we were all there for a week to go to keep working those issues in case we had a problem. So but, you uh, were you were right there, you were ready, and you you actually got to see that launch and see you know the International Space Station start, you know from Baikonur. I mean, what was that like? I, I imagine it had been years of work leading up, and, yeah, think, and it would be years of work to come. But what was it like, you know, seeing that first element get off the ground? Yeah, it's interesting. Now we look back, uh, I think to look back on that launch, it was exciting just before that, but I think. You need to go back and also think about the context of what had happened with Freedom, Space Station Freedom. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Freedom uh, passed by one vote after several years of operate or being uh, in development, and then we had the uh, it got changed into ISS, and then we in about '96 we were pretty in pretty dire straits. The Russians weren't getting the funding they needed. We had some delays on the node and the lab, you know, because it's very hard to build these elements. So there was a time there it was hard to say whether we would even fly. Mm -hmm. Um, and actually, we modified FGB uh, to allow it to have a, uh, uh, a satellite bus, the ICM, that could dock to it in case the service module never flew. We could still build out the USOS. Yeah. And we had to modify the FGB. Uh, but all that turned around uh, in late 97 and 98. And then once we started flying, it was a whole different feeling. It was a huge relief to get started. And of course, there's been a ton of work since then just to get the station to where it is. So mm -hmm. it was a really important moment at that time. And of course the docking uh, with the node, now you actually had the Russian and the U.S. segments together. And I remember when Cabana and Kriklev uh, actually went through the hatch together. Uh, that was a huge, huge mm -hmm. moment. It was a lot of fun after all that work to get there. So, you know, being there at the beginning, what, what was it like to just watch the station evolve over 15 years? Uh, it, you know, it's funny. It was a lot of work. It was a lot of hard work. <laughs> oh, yeah. And and in the midst of, uh, and I, I think I actually caught it pretty well there on the the video. It's exciting to be the first one, but we were still working hard to get the service module mm -hmm. ready. And folks over here were working very hard to get the lab done. It was a lot of, there was a ton of work, a lot of late nights. And every flight there was something else, right? And then we yep. had Columbia. We were down for a while. Uh, we had to learn how to operate without the shuttle, and then the shuttle came back, and we finished the finished the assembly, uh, and then I left. I left around uh, 2005. But 
it's funny that you're in the midst of this exciting thing, but you're always thinking about, oh, okay, I gotta gotta work these next issues because we got this next flight coming. You don't up. have a lot of time to be excited. You're no, just, you're, you're excited <laughs> for a few seconds when you see it off the ground, and then you're like, okay, well, you know, what's next? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's not a lot of time to enjoy it because you're off to the next thing. But mm -hmm. that's part of working on station. Yeah. Well, and you you mentioned you know you left station, you moved on to other programs. Now you're the head of you're overseeing Orion, you know NASA's next generation space vehicle. And it's going to go further than we've ever gone. A lot of really exciting stuff. How important you know has the station been in the lead up to this? You know, building vehicles in space, the international partnerships, things like that. I, I, I think there's a couple things that the station's been essential to do mm -hmm. right or to learn from. Um, the obvious one is that it's the most recent development program we've had, and 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 the development program is significantly different than a, what I would call an operational program, mm -hmm. like we were in the shuttle. Meaning that the shuttle was hard, and there were a lot of issues, of course, especially recovering from the accident. But a lot of the flow, a lot of the subcontractor base was known, mm -hmm. so you were you're working on deltas. It was still very hard to do, but when a development program, you're you're starting from nothing. You're building yeah. up this subcontractor group, you're building on this factory, you're changing your processes. And those of us that are around, I tell people Orion is a lot like Station was in 96. Mm -hmm. uh, and if people remember what the node was like, how hard it was to get that going and some of the issues we had in the lab, and that's very similar yeah. to Orion. So if you have the experience with it and you've done it, uh, you don't get discouraged. You know, here's the things we need to keep our our minds on and our and uh, and what we need to work hard on. So it's good, really good background. Mm -hmm. I also think the political environment. People that didn't work on station don't remember that we had a lot of ups and downs. Yeah. It's hard, and so if you're young and you come into Ryan, go, why isn't this easy? Why aren't we just building a spacecraft to go to the moon? Well, the the political environment is part of what NASA lives in, mm -hmm. and if you've gone through station, you remember that's how it goes, yeah. and so you can. You can also say, look, that we've gone through this before, we've been canceled, we, <laughs> we survived, um, and we just need to keep focused on our job. And it helps a lot, I think, to have that yeah. background. The third thing would be the partnership. You mm -hmm. know, working with the Russians was, was difficult, um, but they were terrific partners. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and the Europeans as well, the Japanese, Canadians, I had the honor to work with all of those folks. And now ESA is a part of the of the service, or of the, so they're actually building the service module of Orion for us. Um, in fact, Mr. Gershenmeyer and I are meeting with Thomas Ryder here in about 15 minutes. So it's very similar kind of <laughs> things. We got issues. We have issues that we need to work together. And how do we get through with our, both of us have different constraints and how do we meld those constraints and our talents and make the vehicle come together. So in that sense, it's a lot of commonality. Oh. Well, yeah, Station must have been a great learning experience, and I bet you're really looking forward to that first Orion launch, too. You <laughs> kind of have a lot of the same feelings. It I is, imagine. and I can see the team, too. It's great to have that focus of the launch coming up mm -hmm. and that uh, sense of accomplishment, too, and then getting on to the next one. So EFT-1, now that we're on the plan to launch in September next year, right, so 10 months, uh, it's the same kind of excitement yep. after all that time, after all the struggles, um, to about to see, seeing the vehicle coming together. Uh, overcoming obstacles, technical and, mm -hmm. and others, and about to fly is a very similar feeling. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, again, Mark Geyer, Orion program manager, 15 years ago, Russian elements manager for NASA, there when the first element, sorry, was launched 15 years ago from Kazakhstan. Mark, thanks for coming on. Really appreciate your insight and in the past and, you know, how it's really going to help push uh, the future forward. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it.